it turns out that you do use a small flat bladed screwdriver to tweak the meter it's just that there was a plastic membrane over that adjustment screw probably a factory seal so I just had to poke through that and then I was able to uh, tweak the meter so I got it pretty much dead on to zero there four screws held on the back which is a very nice die cast aluminum heavy duty very nice case much sturdier than the other two meters I just showed you there's the D-cell I was talking about this one looks quite new not leaking at all probably the previous owner put a new battery in it before they sold it to me it's the itty bitty AC transformer a small rectifier some of these have selenium rectifiers but that looks like an early silicon diode this filter cap I'll replace that just 10 microfarad no big deal and the Sunx uses a circuit board very early type of circuit board there's the calibration pots and there's 12AU7 6 AL5s on the other side so I'll pop those tubes out and shuck them and I will replace that one capacitor I don't think there are too many other caps probably just one big one on the AC input to block uh, the DC component well I don't see it schematic and the parts list here oh yeah 0.01 450 volts it's got to be hiding around in there somewhere yeah cool almost all the capacitors are ceramic which something of this age I'm sure they're fine so just the one 10 microfarad 200 volt electrolytic no problem and uh, Huh, even uh, the 0.1 600 volt they say is ceramic, so maybe all those caps are good except uh, I'll replace the electrolytic. Huh, and they even claim that these resistors are 1%, which is pretty darn good for an old carbon film resistor. I'd be curious to test those and see uh, how close they are. Now, <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed that if you do get one of these meters at these values, uh, resistors are still within spec because some of these, like an 8.49 mega ohm or a 91 mega ohm resistor, can have a really hard f time finding replacements. You're probably going to have to buy several, um, like two 45 mega ohms and a 1 mega ohm and string them together in series to replace that. So I will keep my fingers crossed for sure. Huh, curious, they so that is a selenium rectifier. I wonder if maybe I have a newer revision, because that, uh, that can't be a selenium rectifier. They just don't look like that. Uh, and once I get that done, I uh, have printed out the maintenance and the, uh, the checks you go through. So I just made that mechanical zero adjustment. And then I'll go through and do these electrical balance checks and then the calibration procedures. Ohm's adjustment and check the tubes and so on. And if all goes well, once this is done, I will show you how to do an alignment using it. Okay, I finished going over the meter. What I did was I replaced the one electrolytic. Uh, that is indeed a silicon diode, so I'm just going to leave it alone. The D cell checked out okay. I randomly checked about. Uh, a dozen or so of the resistors down in there and they all checked out with spec so that's awesome all the capacitors are indeed ceramic so I don't don't need to uh, do anything with those and uh, I clean the controls with some deoxit and uh, I cleaned up the front a little bit which is some 409 and uh, paper towel uh, there was some grunge around the knobs not too surprisingly there are some scratches on the clear plastic here. I want to determine that this meter is uh, fully functioning and worth uh, using. 
I will try to take some uh, Nova scratch remover and see if I can buff those up. So I'm going to now move on to the maintenance uh, directions here and calibration and so on. I've already done the mechanical uh, zero adjustments. So now moving on to the electrical balance check. And they say to turn on and allow it to warm up for 15 minutes. I've already done that. It's a one downside to VTVMs is to get the full accuracy out of these you have to let them warm up for a while. I believe back in the day the guys would just leave these turned on all day. Uh, maybe even from day to day they'd leave them turned on. Uh, so, let's see what we're supposed to do here. So, put on plus a DC volts. Okay, got that. Rotate the zero adjust control. It should be possible to set the meter pointer at either zero or 60% of full scale deflection on any range. Uh, okay, I'm on the highest range right now. Here's the zero adjust. So I can definitely set it on zero, which is what you'd be normally be doing. And they say shooting at 60% deflection. No problem, I can get about 80 on that range. So I'll just drop that to another range. No problem. Zero. Okay. And here's the lowest range. A little touchy in this <laughs> very sensitive range here. Uh, so yeah, no problem. Alright, set the selector to negative DC volts. So right there. Rotate the zero just control to be possible to set the meter pointer either zero or ten percent full deflection. Okay, there's zero and deflection no problem. This is a really good sign. It's pass seems to be passing the first test without any trouble. This DC plus and minus is kind of a handy thing. You may be used to on multimeters where you have a positive and negative terminal and the meter uh, reads plus and minus, minus for negative voltage. Well, you can't go negative on a meter because it just goes way off to the left. So when you put it on negative volts DC, it in effect switches the two leads on the meter. So it'll give you a positive deflection but uh, you're actually reading uh, negative volts. Like if I got a reading like here, it says two, and I'm on negative volts DC, that means I'm reading negative two volts DC. All right, next page. Okay, we passed that with flying colors. Oh, and I tested the tubes, so uh, they're fine. Uh, okay, now we're gonna get involved with these calibration controls back here. Check the mechanical zero position of the pointer. It's necessary to zero the pointer. Uh, well, I'll have to warm up for at least 30 minutes. Well, I'm glad I turned this on a while ago. <laughs> it's been at least 30 minutes that I've had this on there. Right, I'm supposed to zero the meter. There's a little potentiometer down here called zero. Um, sometimes when you change ranges or it has been sitting for a while, when you fire it up, you're going to have to tweak this a little bit to get that needle exactly on zero. Okay. Uh, check the line voltage. Should be calibrated with the power cord at 120 volts, blah, blah, blah. I've got this plugged into the outlet that I'll be normally using the meter with, so that's fine. I guess what they're implying here is that if you calibrate it like on a 110 volt outlet, 
then used it somewhere else as 120 or 125, the calibration might be off a bit. So the range switch at 50 volts. Okay. All right, now I'm supposed to connect the probes to a 50 volt supply. I read ahead and I pulled out uh, my dual 0 to 50 volt 1 amp Hewlett Packard power supply. If you didn't have this, uh, maybe uh, connect a few 9 volt batteries together or do the best you can. From what I've read, I don't think you need to have exactly 50 volts. Basically, you just need to have some known voltage going into it because all you do is you put a known voltage in, you check the meter reading, and you tweak the control to get the same reading on this meter as your known voltage source. So I'm just going to double check my supply here. It's off. Oh, there we go. So, I trust this meter. It's fairly new. It's fairly accurate. It's 50.0, so that's good enough for me. This is indeed putting out 50 volts. Now I'll have to grab some... Uh, some clips or something to hook the meter up to that. Okay, I've pulled out a conventional flat bladed screwdriver and I need to tweak the DC plus trimmer back here. See if I get that needle right on five. There we go. Alright. What's next? Okay, reverse the leads, put it on negative volts, and do the same thing. And adjust the negative DC trimmer to get the, the 50 volt mark again. DC calibration. I went ahead and checked a few random voltage values, and I found the meter was still off. For example, I calibrated the meter to 50 volts, so when I measured that, the needle was dead on. But when I meant to measure 25 volts, the needle was off by a tick. When I went to measure 5 volts, it was off by a couple ticks. And uh, I found the same uh, discrepancies in other ranges as well. So I decided to start chucking the resistors and uh, pretty much they were all dead on. Whatever they used to make these blue resistors out of uh, has really held up well over time and they're all well within tolerance except for one of them which is this guy here at the top of this string of resistors which forms the voltage divider for the different ranges on the meter. Um, when I went to measure that, I got 7.34. That's a 1% tolerance resistor, so it should be 7.07 um, on the high side would be the maximum it could be off. So 7.34 is definitely out of tolerance. Now, unfortunately, 7 mega ohms is an oddball value. The closest standard value would be 6.8. And uh, so I don't have anything to replace that with. What I'm going to try to do, because I'm off on the high side, it, uh, if I put the right resistor in parallel with it, I can bring that value down. So that's what I'm going to try doing. I went to an online calculator for, uh, measure, for calculating parallel resistances, and apparently to get 7.34 down to 7, I need something like a 140 mega ohm resistor, which is also an oddball value, but... I'm going to string together um, some resistors and tack it on and see if I can uh, get this more within uh, tolerance. Pretty, pretty easy to do because it's on the bottom of the circuit board. Uh, I believe these two points I think so I can just tack a few resistors in series and bridge these two points and try to bring that down and see if the meter uh, works better then. <laughs> 